Hey, everybody. Scott with Pray 5. Uh, I decided to go with something a little lighter, a little bit more uh, encouraging than the, we've had the last eight weeks, or excuse me, more than eight weeks. Yeah. yeah. I guess it'd be three months almost, I guess, two and a half, three months of uh, stuff. Well, we did the prophecies, we did hell. Uh, so we did four of hell, four or five of hell. And so, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to talk on heaven tonight. Uh, there will be some things that are kind of, you know, a few things, but it, you think, well, why don't we talk about something other than than, than discouraging? Uh, hey, real quick, if you haven't seen my, my, my Facebook, uh, if you're on YouTube, uh, you don't know this, uh, if you're going to the pray5.org website, it was wiped. Uh, it was, it, it's gone. Um, good thing is, is I still have the Dominion name, and I have a external hard drive, which I backed up all my stuff on the external hard drive, so I'm good there. Last time this happened, it took me two weeks to just to get the everything transferred because I, I kept finding stuff. And I would, so what I'll do is when the new one comes up, I've already talked to one of the IT people. I don't know if they're going to do it or I'm going to have to have somebody else. But the thing is, as it comes up, if you're going into the pray5.org, you notice, hey, it's only got 30 or 40 or 50 videos and studies. Well, it'll take me a little while to get everything uh, put up. It'll, it'll take me uh, probably at least a month to get everything because there's um, but the thing is on, on uh, it'll, it'll get reloaded it probably won't take a month but I'm just waiting for the IT people to put a new site up there it may not look the same but it'll once they do all their whatever they do they will start all over again for the second time in five years um, let's go ahead and pray in shall we Father thank you for this time together. Thank you for your blessings, your mercy, and your grace. We ask that you would give us, give me the words to say through your Holy Spirit and for the words to hear and that we would glorify your name in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Amen. Okay, it's already populating. Hey, Mike. The um, thing is, what we want to do is talk, talk tonight real quickly, just a real quick update. Um, everybody's watching what's going on in the Middle East. Get asked, is this prof prophetic it's called birth pains? Uh, we're waiting again for those that are new ones that are coming on. Uh, read Ezekiel 37, 38, 39, specifically 38, 39, uh, because what's going to happen is Russia, when they attack from the north, when they're leading a coalition from the north, which is going to go over the Golan Heights, uh, that's when Ezekiel 38 and 39 will, will happen. Uh, because God says so. Um, we don't know when that's going to happen. It could be before or after the rapture. We just don't know. Um, so, well, you said, what's 38 and 39? Well, that's when the Gog, Magog, uh, Tagarma, and uh, Russia, Turkey, Iran. They're all three in bed together. And Russia wants the stuff from, uh, from Israel. They want, the st they want the money. They want the booty. Uh, God says he's going to put a hook in their jaw and draw them in during this time. The other two are Islamic countries that hate the Jewish people. If you don't believe that, turn on the news for about five minutes. Uh, all the Every nation has where there's a, a Muslim population, they're going after the Jewish people. Russia, uh, Germany, everywhere. We're going to talk about that also um, in, in as far as what God says about that. Um why are they going after this, you know, Ezekiel 38 and 39, again, when you see Russia and these three, these, these three main ones attacking along with Libya, Sudan, Ethiopia, Syria, they're, on the, they're already on the northern border of Israel, which Ezekiel says that's where they'll attack from, and they'll come across the mountains, which there's the mountains between uh, the Golan Heights and Syria and uh, Lebanon. Okay, so where are all of the biggest, you know, Hamas, those animals were small compared to Hezbollah. Hezbollah is the big force, and they're in Lebanon. And their base and their leaders for, for all of the, those uh, jihad, 
uh, Hezbollah and Hamas are all in Damascus, Syria, which if you read Isaiah 7, 17, 1, that's where, they'll, that's where they'll leave and meet the Lord and find their place in hell uh, because it's going to be destroyed. It's the oldest city, oldest operating city on the planet. Uh, and it said we'll come to utter destruction. Okay? So that's going to happen. Um, the, the, the armies will come across from the north, which they can they get a half million or 750,000 or even a million man army to come across? They will line up like, you know, free free cookies at, uh, uh, you know, at the 7-Eleven. At Everybody will line up just itching to get into get into Israel to fight. Uh, and they'll come across again from the north. It's going to have to be from the north. And God's going to kill five out of six with hailstones. So they'll drop planes, helicopters, UAVs, APCs, uh, troops on the ground. He's going to flood them. That will drown tanks and other vehicles and earthquakes. So you'll have crap falling on top of them and crushing them. It said five out of six will die and be buried there. And the other one six will lick their wounds, go back. So the the the, the jihads and the, the other Hezbollah and Hamas will lose most of their fighters. It looks like all, when they go in there, they're going to lose most of them. They'll go back licking their wounds. Okay. Um, the thing is, you're saying, well, why are they all attacking the Jewish people worldwide? Because we serve a different God. The God of the of the Muslims is they call him Allah. Okay, that it, Allah means in in the Arabic, it just means God. It's a name like us saying God. Okay, the you go into deeper, and I don't have time to go all into it. Um, my suggestion, if you're, if you're interested in that, go to there's a book called Seeking Allah finding Jesus. Excellent book. It's a, not a real long read. It's called Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus. And you go on Amazon, it's like uh, 15 bucks, 12 or 15 dollars. It's cheap. Um, well, anyway, they worship and they're trying to bring in their 12th Iman to bring in their Messiah uh, through chaos, the world chaos. And that's what they're, they're very religious in their, in their pagan religion. And uh, the thing is, their God, who hates the Jewish people because our Messiah, Jesus Christ, who is Jewish, he's not Christian, he's Jewish, a completed Jew, obviously, uh, is what he, because he's the one who completed the covenant between us and, and God, the Father. The, the thing is, Satan hates him. He came out of the Jewish people, and he was the one who put the death nail in Satan to where he'll spend eternity in like a fire. So he's mad. He's going to drag as many as he can with him. Um, so he's the one telling these people what to do to hate the Jewish people. When they say from the river to the sea, you know, Palestine will be, most of these people don't have enough mental intelligence to be able to when I say this, I don't mean as far as like knowing math and science and everything, but as far as history, as far as the with their the implications is what I mean. To be able to figure out that what they're talking about is a complete annihilation, not just in Israel, but throughout the world of every Jewish person. Have you heard that before? Have you heard have you heard before how many times in history has, has Satan tried to eliminate the Jewish people? Many times. And God always keeps a remnant. And he'll keep a remnant this time. So those people that are trying to wipe them off the face of the earth, because if they did, I mean, Satan would win. Can't happen. <laughs> God's already in the future looking back, telling us how it's going to end. Okay. So um, they hate the Jewish people because the God they worship hates the Jewish people. They are from the, from the lineage of Ishmael, which is Abraham's uh, son. Is the first child he had, which is, but he's not the firstborn, and I'll explain that here. Um, with a Egyptian handmaid, in other words, he had he, he, he had relations with uh, his wife's handmaid, and she told him to, and then regretted it. Well, so that means that the bloodline didn't come from Sarah; it came from uh, Hagar, Hagar, an Egyptian hand, pagan handmaid. So and God said, that's not the one that's going to be the, uh, he's not going to be the firstborn. I'll bless him with many, many nations and 12 kings and so on and so forth. But he's not, he's not the firstborn. He's not the one of promise. 
the next one is, which is going to be Isaac, which means laughter. Um, so Isaac came from his wife, Sarah, which means mother of many nations. Abraham, father of many nations. So when Isaac is the patriarch, Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob are the patriarchs of not only Judaism, but Christianity as well. Now, the Abraham is the patriarch for Islam as far as Ishmael, because he, you know, that's that's his that's one of his his first son. He's not the firstborn, but he's the first son he had, uh, and that's where they get that from, and goes off into where they believe now. Uh, so that's what we're looking at right now. There, that's why we have all this conflict here, because the enemy hates the Jewish people, hates the Christian people, because we if it wasn't for a Jewish nation, there would be no Christianity. So if you hate a Jewish person, then you hate God. They say, well, I, that, that's just judgment. No, that's just the scriptures. He said, he said, it didn't. Re he's no respecter of persons. If you're a good Jewish person that didn't have have Christ Yeshua as yourself for your salvation, to forgive you of your sins, just like anybody else, you'll still die and go to hell. Um, but the the thing is, he said, told Abraham, he says, I will curse those who curse you, and I will bless those who bless you. And that's reiterated twice in the Old Testament. It's even even Paul says that. Paul says, those who bless Israel, bless the people, will be blessed, and those who curse them will be cursed. He's just reiterating what God said. This is in the Old and New Testament. So if you say, well, I don't believe that. All I know is some really bad people that are Jewish. And I know, some, I know a lot of bad people that are, that are charlatans that, are, that claim to be Christian. So that doesn't matter. Um, so when you see all the hatred to stand up and to bless the Jewish people and stand up for Israel, is your it's biblical, Biblic, yeah, biblical as far as uh, standing up saying that that is God's chosen people. There's no such thing as the replacement theology is not in Scripture. It's completely bogus. Um, okay, uh, another thing. Have you been looking on? The distraction that we have right now in the United here in the, from our friends here in the United States, not the ones in Canada. Look on our southern border. Have you looked at what's happening again? There is a massive army coming towards our border. It's already there. Hundreds of thousands. If you'll just look, go look at the news. Don't take my, just go Google it. Just just YouTube it. You can see the, the live videos. Uh, there, you know, like a thief. He says, "Look over here." Why he's coming over and stealing or sticking the ribs? here. This is where your distraction is. Well, um, the the thing is, while we're focusing on that horrific uh, stuff that happened in Israel, the thing is, our southern border is, is we already have 5.1 million people. We don't know where they're at in our country. There is a whole bunch more already coming, and they are a lot of military age single males. Look in the crowd, see how many how many children and, and females you see. There's there'll be some crowds where you'll see some, but you won't, most of them are young men, young men. They're doing this in Europe also. The European Union, uh, like in um, Greece, one of the islands has six thousand people. Had eight thousand single males of military age come from Africa in one day. They all showed up on the shore, and it was uh, eight thousand. They figured around eight thousand, so they actually outnumber the inhabitants of that Greek island. Where's the women and children if these are immigrants? Okay. If you're thinking, no, that's just uh, just tinfoil hat, then um, it's very naive. Uh, and when, when it's just a matter, and they're warning us, Israel's warning us, our, our allies and our enemies are even saying it. They're saying, you're, you're next, or you're coming. We don't know when that'll be. It could be tomorrow. It could be, you know, whenever. But they're saying that our country here is is, is on the chopping block, and they're going to do something. What? We don't know. Uh, it's probably because of my mouth, and when I say I don't, I'm not apologetic, is probably why I lost a lot of my stuff on, on, on the social media. Oh, well. Um... Make no mistake about our country is going to be involved in a conflict. Uh, it's coming. They're already here. Closing the borders off is going to keep the next wave from coming on. But the 5.1 million are already inside. It's kind like of closing the door after the cow already gets out. And that's so we'll close them in and they're here with us. So we start getting prepared. Um, 
the realize the uh, the gods the god of the of the Middle Easterners that don't aren't Christian are following it's the same Canaanite god that they can, in the land they're in. That whole area uh, of Canaan, if you'll read in Exodus where they go through Canaan, these the the men and women still worship that same god. They just call it by different names and all. They, they change the name and rehash it throughout the centuries. But the, the God that the people who are attacking Israel right now is the Canaanite God. Mm. It's not the God that we worship. Uh, if you'll remember uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. 2 Timothy chapter uh, 3, 5. Um, Uh, one through five, I'll just read real quick. It says, this is perilous times uh, and perilous men. In other words, not nice people. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal, mm, despisers of good, traitors, Headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying his his power, and from such people turn away. We have the pastors like I was noticing. Someone was talking to me today, matter of fact, about uh, Joel Osteen. Usually he said I like listening to him. I said, well, you know, he didn't. He's a real good motivational speaker, but he's not a Christian. I mean, he claims Christianity, but he doesn't teach Christian. Uh, the the, the thing is, he said, well, normally at the end, they say, hey, do you want to invite Jesus into your heart and you know, all this? He said, they don't even do that anymore. I said, well, he's not teaching Christianity. He's teaching feel-good uh, world world religion, which is uh, going to fit right in with the Antichrist. This is what we, I just read on the brutality. It, it, please, again, don't watch the videos. It'll it'll disturb your spirit. I mean, where they, they, what they do to pregnant women and, and the unborn child and they're sitting there laughing about it, and, and, and you know, you know, saying Allah Akbar, in which you know, yeah, you're sure they're they're following their God, sure, because he says to rape and to murder and to do what they did, uh, and just the barbarity. I mean, I, I didn't think I could anything would surprise me, but what they did with going to a family, you know, and uh, they would uh, shoot the husband. And he'd sit there and watch while all these guys had their way with his wife in front of him and take their child and put him in an oven and turn it on while they're have their way with her and then before they they made sure they were all dead but they wanted them to see it first that's the barbarity that's how we know that the evil that we are going to be fighting and these the Israelis are fighting that's the evil they're fighting they need to eliminate these people now am I going to confuse the people in Gaza to Hamas no there, there's there's innocent people there they have no what they're, they're being stuck in between going if we leave they'll shoot us if we don't leave they'll shoot us um, so that's why this, what's going on right now has to be done to root out the, the cancer of uh, these evil men. Uh, they're not men. These are, these are absolute demonic uh, hordes. And Hezbollah on the northern border is worse than them and better funded. Uh, if you're having trouble keeping up with everything going on, welcome to the club. It's called birth pains, birth pains. Uh, Genesis 12, 3, it says, God told Abraham, I'll bless those who bless you and I'll curse those who curse you. I wanted to make sure to put that in there. Uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. You just read the chapter. Uh, Ishmael is, is going to be in Genesis 17, 15 through... Okay, I do. Uh, Ishmael is not the firstborn. Just go in and read uh, chapter 17, starting in verse 15 through 27. And it'll explain that Ishmael is not the firstborn and he's not the chosen. Um, let's go ahead and get into heaven. What is heaven? We talked about hell. <laughs> okay, and understand, we have, take, mentally, I want you to do this. Take all the sand on the planet, every ocean, every, every uh, desert, Every and think of all if you could spread out and count the number of grains of sand and take one piece of sand out of there. <clears throat> if the, all the sand that was there uh, represented the knowledge of what heaven and hell and God's plan was, 
that grain of sand would be how much we plug into our brain that we understand of what's actually out there. Okay, understand that this isn't all of it. God gives us enough information to be able to understand that, yeah, this is truth. Okay, he gives us enough information to be able to say, okay, so that you'll believe. Because if I wanted you to know more, I would have given it, I told you. Like, I don't understand, I can understand eternity, future, just going forward forever. I can't understand eternity past. How far is that? I mean, I, I, my brain just can't. And he tells us, he said, and I'm wondering, and I've got the, the verse, chapter verse in here somewhere. It says, don't try to figure that out. There's uh, Just go to Google and uh, say things God tells, you know, that we can't understand of God's, you know, of God. Yeah, that's one of them. It's like, he said, don't be trying to figure this out. He said, don't do it. He said, because you can't. You're a little pea brain. I don't care if you're Einstein or, or these other guys, you know, but then you've got the other guys like Christopher Hitchens who thinks he's, you know, that he's figured it out and he's smarter than God. I pity people like that because they're going to, they will, they will be in a lake of fire. Um, understand that this, that heaven is shown as the throne room of God. Okay. And I'm going to explain how that is. And you're like, well, how do we know where it's at? Because he tells us. Uh, Jesus' throne is right next to the Father's. How do you know that? Because in Matthew 22, 44, Matthew 22, 44, uh, even in uh, John 1 18 where he says no one has seen God and live who is next to the who is who's sitting in the bosom of the Father okay Acts 2 33 uh, that's another place so it's Matthew 22 44 Acts 2 33 on that Christ is at the right hand of the Father there's two thrones why is there not three if you uh, the Holy Spirit is God also there are three separate individuals all three, the exact same individual, all three separate individuals, because they all talk independently of each other. Not three gods, there's one. One God, three parts. Again, one of those things that God says, don't try to figure that out, you'll, you'll, you'll break something. Um, in, in heaven, people think, they see the old Hollywood of people playing harps, you know, play, floating around a cloud. I've actually heard people talk about this. They said, well, I don't want to go to heaven because it's going to be boring, there's nothing to do. So God is too boring to make something an eternity. He's just going to let you sit on a cloud and play a harp for 40 million years. So, well, you know, I don't have anything to do. Really? Really? If, if that's the God you worship, then that's uh, idolatry because the God, God says you don't have any idea what I've got in store for you. Uh, the, the passage we see, it says, no ear I have seen, ear, no ear has heard, no heart no mind is conceived what God has in store for those who love him. They use that a lot saying that that's going to be, and I have even been guilty of that until I started doing the research on it, that that is, it's not talking about heaven. It's talking about his righteousness, his his, uh, his work in us, in our lives, and in our hearts, and uh, what he's got in store for us. It's, it doesn't, a lot of times they use that for heaven. It's just not there. But he says, you don't have any idea what heaven is like. You have a, just a, the grain of sand of understanding. So people say, well, you're going to play a harp. That started out in Hollywood. That's what they thought of something like that, where you're going to play a wild harp because they have harps in the Bible. They just said, oh, you just play that for, and float around. But if I go to hell, boy, that's where all my friends are at, and we can party. You know? <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Uh, if you're watching Hollywood for your for your theology, you're you're bankrupt and you're starving um, for for tr for truth because that's not Hollywood is not where it's at. If you remember when he says the that we will go up into the clouds to meet him in, in uh, First Thessalonians chapter four, verse thirteen through eighteen, that's the rapture. That's where and people say, oh, I, I got I got to address this. They said, well, rapture didn't appear in the Bible. In the English translation, no, it sure doesn't because the English Bible didn't come out until 1611. Where did the English Bible, where the English Bible come from in 1611, in King James 1611? According to Greek, Latin, Hebrew. Um, in, the, in the Latin, it says rapturo, so it sure does. Um, kind of like, uh, I may have addressed this last week, I don't remember. People say, well, you know, unicorn is in the Bible. Did I talk about that last week? Yeah, you did. Something. Look, this is extra. This is no cost. This is extra. 
Uh, there was a guy who was he was trying to pin another Christian down. He said, well, eight times in the Old Testament it talks about a unicorn. He said, there's no false record of a, of, a, of a unicorn. Okay, he was using a term, a modern term. Because if you think of a unicorn, what do you think of? What kind of animal? The horse with a horn. The horse with a horn. That's a modern term, unicorn for a horse. The Bible talks about it in eight different places, unicorn. <clears throat> and you go back to, to the, the, the Webster's Dictionary, if you can go into the computer or computer and look up the original Webster's Dictionary and type in unicorn, guess where it goes to? Rhinoceros. You type in rhinoceros, it goes to unicorn. It's the rhinoceros with one horn, and then there's a rhinoceros with two horns. It's called unicornus. It's got that long um, Latin name. Unicorn is a rhinoceros with, with the one horn. And it says in the Webster's Dictionary from 200 years ago, from the one, the one horn on the, on the end of its, coming from its, uh, uh, I guess it would be, that would be jaw, or snout. Yeah. So they're trying to take a modern term and apply it to the 1611 Bible. It's like saying gay, you know. Well, you know, look back here. They talk about how they're they're gay. Back, you know, two thousand years ago, they must have been homosexual. They're taking a term that was that was uh, destroyed and turning it into something nasty. You know, forty, fifty years ago, just like the rainbow was taken out of the, you know, taken out of context, and they turned it into something nasty. Okay, so you can't do that. <laughs> the, so again, the unicorn is talking about a, a single horn or a rhinoceros, not the dual horn. That's what they're talking about. See, just, just common. And somebody says, "Oh, that's how. That's why they don't believe because I can't believe the Bible because there's no horses with you know, with a horn." Well, no, because that term didn't come up until 40, 50, 60 years ago. However, but, but not very, not very long ago. So therefore, they're going to lose their stuff. They're going to go to go to hell and say, "Oh," and Christ is going to look at them and say, "Lay out the books and say, sorry, sorry for your luck." No unicorn. No unicorn. No unicorn, but here's a rhinoceros right here. Um, and, the, and so you turned down the, my word because you, you you hung your hat on that. Wow. Yeah. Um, there's three heavens spoken of in, in Scripture. Three, there's, there's three heavens. Now, I know before I get, please don't send me any emails. The Mormon uh, understanding of how many heavens there are, their last top heaven is called Cobalt. I believe I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's been a, a few weeks since I've looked at, the, at their scriptures, at their at their book, but it's called Cobalt. Then they have the middle. Then they have the earthly. You know, so if you're just a, a Mormon and you're okay, you're here. If you're better, then you, you're here. And if you're really good, then you're up here. Well, that's not what this is talking about. That's uh, they they stole that out of out of scripture. Three heavens. And this is going to be referring to, and this is pretty much universal as far as I'm understanding on this. It says, we know that Genesis, in Genesis there are three heavens spoken of. And when we see the term heaven, it is not, when it's not used symbolically in Scripture, it usually refers to one of three realms. This is the Old and the New Testament. If you remember, Job talks about space. Job talks about how the earth is hung in nothing. You know, the, he said the sphere, the circle of the earth. So the flat earth Christian, or the flat earth believers, or they believe the earth is flat. Job, who God talked to, said the sphere. The sphere is like a baseball. It's round. Go Rangers. Um, <laughs> had to throw that in. It's a Rangers fan. Um, but the, oh, I should have worn my Rangers shirt tonight. I didn't even think about it because they're going to win the World Series tonight. Um, or at least I hope they do. The... Um, the thing is, it's sphere. It's a round sphere. That's a ball. Okay. So the earth isn't round, and the people who think it's flat are, that's, they read your Bible. Um, the first atmosphere is our our atmosphere. You take our atmosphere, the earth, and the, the, the air between the ground and space, our atmosphere, that's the number one. And that's why it refers to it. The second is space from there to the throne room. The third heaven is the throne room of God. So when Christ tells us, he said, I, I come, I'm going to go prepare a place for you, and I'm going to bring you to where I'm at in my Father's house, that is in the third heaven because the space that's in between there 
between the throne room and earth and the earth's atmosphere. That's not what he's talking about. And think about it, we can't see out we're, we're doing we've never been past our own moon. We've sent a uh, the Hubble telescope to go out towards the end of our galaxy and everything. And at light speed, it'll take 200,000 years or something like that, at the speed of light. Uh, so we, again, a grain of sand. It, we had an understanding of the universe, a grain of sand of understanding of the universe. Okay, um, God's on the other side of that. They say that the universe is hundreds of millions of light years apart. Well, he's on the other side of it. And he put it together. And he built it out of, the, he, out of his own mind. That's how, that's how who we're worshiping. Um, so that's when we, when we when Christ comes and gets us. He travels that space instantly and brings us back home. Oh, uh, kind of like on the my wife was telling me this, and it was something so simple I didn't even think about it until just now. I um, mean, she told me and I thought, wow, that's pretty that's pretty cool. Post tribulation, in other words, people who believe that post that you will leave in post tribulation, there's a problem, and I've not heard it. But I just hadn't thought of it. That's what it was. I'm just not thinking about it. If Christ comes and raptures people at the end of the tribulation, all the unbelievers are going to be going into a, to hell. If all the believers are taken up in a in a rapture, you know, first of all, I say we have to come and do a U. You can come right back. There would be going under. You wouldn't be going to the judgment seat of Christ. You have to get judged for, at the judgment seat of Christ first. So you miss that and come back. Also, the second thing, which this is cool, who's going to populate the millennial kingdom? Human beings are supposed to go in there. If all 100% of the population of the earth are going one place to the other, there is no in between. There's no neutral ground. So if you're an unbeliever who took the mark of the beast, you're going to hell. If you didn't and you accepted Christ as your savior and you're raptured up post, then there's nobody to go into the millennial kingdom. Again, scripture post trip and mid trip don't make sense. Mm. Gee. I just heard somebody go, mm. Mm. Yeah. My wife gave me that last one so she gets the credit. I married a smart woman. Mm. Okay, understanding what heaven is like, you know, like I was telling you, like a grain of sand. One of the passages I want to read from Jesus is John John 14. John 14, John chapter 14. Let me scoot around here. I've got to get doing the little swivel chairs I see people in. I see some flashes, and I wonder, I wonder why they had those, and now I know. But, uh, verse, uh, chapter 14, I'm just going to read the whole, their whole chapter real quick. It says, let your heart not be troubled. Believe in God and also believe in me. This is Jesus talking. And in my Father's house, that's the third heaven, are many mansions. Mansions are translated as in rooms. One huge place with many, 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 many rooms. And these rooms could be the size. I mean, he owns the universe. How big could these rooms be? They could be light years apart. We just don't know. He didn't tell us. He didn't give us that information. He said there's many mansions. And where, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may also be. And where I go, you may know and the way you know. So therefore, when Christ says, Christ talks about this, this is the rapture. He says, I'm going to come get you and take you to where I'm at, to my father's house first. You're not going to go like this, a big Yui, okay? And Thomas, verse 5, said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. He said, how are we supposed to know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So people say there's more than one way to heaven and that like through Buddha or Islam or something like that. Uh, Christ says, I mean, like Christ says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is no other way. So when you have somebody say, oh, no, you know, there's, there's more than one way. That's just your opinion. No, that's the opinion of Christ. He said these words. Uh, let me see. Verse 7, it says, If you had known me, Christ, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him, and you have seen him, physically seen him. Because saying, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. For I and the Father are the same. Context. 
the same essence. That's, that's the context. The same essence, the same individual. Three separate parts, one individual. Genesis 1.1 1, 1 says, it talks about it. Verse 8, and then Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it will be sufficient for us. And he's like, I think this is where the first time somebody started rolling their eyes going, oh, you know, with my, with my daughter. Um, and he, Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say to me, show us the Father? Do you not know and believe that I am in the, in, I am in the Father and the Father is in me? And the words that I speak, I do not do on my own, but of my own authority. But the Father who dwells inside of me does the works. Believe me, and I am in the Father. And believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is me. They're the same. Or else believe me in the, for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly I say unto you, he who believes in me, believes the works that I do, will, will do, they will... Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will all do also. And greater works for that he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, and the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Okay, this is how you know you just can't pray. God, here's my prayers. Amen. That doesn't get any. When you hear somebody praying in church, they say, God... And another thing is they say, God, the Father, Father, I, I believe in this, Father, I ask this, Father, I ask that, Father, 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 and they'll say Father like 47 times. And it's like me coming to you and saying, if your name is John, I say, John, hey, I really like you, John. John, you want to go to the store, John? John, would you like to? I mean, it's not, not wrong. It's just, just talk to him. Just talk to him. And the, the thing is, he's telling us, anything you ask in my name, in other words, Pray to the Father in the name of the Son with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Matthew 6, 9. And so this right here, this is uh, John chapter 14, verse uh, 13. Through four, 13 and 14. Then go to Matthew 6, verse 9. And then Romans 8, 26 for the Holy Spirit as far as knowing how to pray. So you don't pray, God, which, which, which one are you talking to? Well, I'm talking to the Father. Well, people that may be listening to you. And you, when you're talking to somebody, I don't just say, hey, and not look at you. I call you by name. Say, hey, John. Well, Father, Father God, show the respect. And when, so when you're praying to God who's in the in heaven, in the third heaven, pray to the Father. And then he says, and Christ says, anything you ask in my name. So when you're praying, you say, God, this, 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 amen. You, you really sounds good, but it doesn't get any further than the, than the air conditioning ducts. You say, Father, God, here's my prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit's leading your prayer, Romans 8, 26, in the name of Jesus Christ, or Yeshua. That is the proper way to do it because he said, well, how do you know? Well, because Christ said this is the way you pray. Okay? Jesus promises another helper. This is where he talks about the Holy Spirit. Um, and the indwelling of the Father and Son. Let me see. I want to skip to that. I don't want to read that. Mm. Let's see. Excuse me just a second because the thing is there was a part in here and I skipped through and I missed a part and I can't find it so um, I'm going to go ahead and go to the next one because I've, I've lost it. Don't you hate when you do that? And I, I couldn't go to my website. It's not there. I have to go through. It's organized on that so I have to do something else. But anyway the throne room of God, the throne of God which is in Revelation 4 Revelation 4 chapter 1 Chapter 4, verse 1. If you can't tell, my brain's going in a little, two different directions. Those of you that know me know why. <laughs> so please forgive me on that. Not bad, it's just I've got, I've got a lot of stuff on my plate right now. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. This is where, um, no thanks, <laughs> the... Um, the thing is what we have here this chapter 4 verse 1 is the last time that the church is spoken of this is where the, re the revelation John the revelator is speaking on the rapture and then we're not spoken of again until chapter 19 but let's go ahead and read this shall we and this is the throne room of heaven 
for obvious reasons we're talking about. After these things, this is chapter 4, verse 1 in Revelation. After these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice that I heard was like a trumpet. This is John the Revelator hearing this and seeing it. It was like a trumpet speaking with speaking with me, saying, Come up here to heaven, and I will show you these things that must take place after this. And he went, you go through the first, go through the first three chapters on the seven churches, and you know, it says, Immediately I was in the I was in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, and be, behold, a throne set. There was a throne set in heaven, and the one that's capital O, that's Christ, who sat on that throne. And he, Christ, who sat on there was like a jasper, like a sardis stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance, okay, in appearance like an emerald, before somebody says anything. If somebody, before somebody says, see, look, and they have, why do I say this? Because I see people who are willing to commit blasphemy to try to put the rainbow flag, which is means something different in our culture. If you went back and talked to somebody in the 60s and you talk, put a rainbow flag up, they said, oh, that's showing the promise of God that not to rain on the earth again because that's where it came from. The rainbow was, was, you know, God promising to Noah and his family that I will never flood the earth completely again. It was God's promise and then it was taken and turned into something evil. The rainbow itself is, is holy. The, the rainbow flag is just the opposite. Okay? It's not holy. And he says, and there was a rainbow around the throne of God, and God is the one who said what is and is not a sin. So be very careful there when you're saying, well, see there, and trying to take a modern modern term and applying it to 2,000-year-old text, okay? Verse 4, it says, around the throne were 24 elders, and on the, and on the thrones I saw sitting 24, uh, there was 24 thrones, and I saw 24 elders sitting on those thrones, clothed in white robes and they had crowns of gold on their heads and from the throne proceeded lights, lightnings, thunderings and voices, seven lamps of fire and they were burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal. In other words, you got the throne, now picture in your head the way it looks, it talks about how beautiful it is. Well, then there's a sea of glass, a pure glass that would you walk, it's around the throne. How big, we don't know, but it's huge. Whatever it is, we'll, and we'll get to see it. If you're a believer, you'll get to see it. If you're an unbeliever, I'm sorry for your luck. But the, the thing is, it will, it, it's, it's pure. It talks about how the roads are made out of gold. When it talks about the gold, the roads made out of gold, which is building material up there, it's clear like glass. It's opaque. It's so pure. Okay, cool. Uh, and before the throne, there was a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes on the front and the back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second creature was like a, was like a calf. The third creature had the face like a man. And the fourth creature was like a flying eagle. And the four creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they did not rest day or night. And they were singing, Kadosh, 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 Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty, who is, who was, and who is to come. That's Jesus Christ, who was, who is, and who is to come. The Father's never left his throne room. He's, he's everywhere. He's omnipresent. He is, his presence, he would come to the, he would show his presence in the altar at the Holy of Holies until the covenant was completed from, from uh, Moses until it was completed with the day of Pentecost with Christ when he completed the covenant when when the veil was ripped at the at the at the uh, death of Christ, he said, "Who was, who is, and who is to come? Who is to come? That's physically coming. That's Jesus Christ. So he's telling us what the heaven looks like. It's absolutely gorgeous. And the thing is, we're going to have jobs. You're saying, well, I got a job here. Well, I want a job there. You don't understand. It'll be something that you will absolutely thrive at and be perfect at and know everything there is to know about it. And it will be, you'll be able to enjoy God's uh, wonders throughout eternity. And you'll, you'll never get tired. You'll never, you'll never get fatigued mentally or physically. You, we will not have any diseases or sicknesses or anything. There's no sick days. And we'll absolutely be overwhelmed with just how great it is. We, we have no, Paul 
John the Revelator, uh, I'm trying to think of who else, uh, Moses, uh, or just three that went, got to see a glimpse of what, what, the, what heaven looks like, and they couldn't explain, and Daniel, uh, couldn't explain exactly how good it was. I mean, just, it was too too much. They, they didn't have human words to explain, just like, I mean, think about it. Uh, John the Revelator was standing in front of the throne when he fell on his face in front of the first angel, and the angel said, don't you dare do that. He said, this is in Revelation. Um, he's, uh, I've got it in here somewhere. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the reference here in a little bit. He said, don't you dare do that. He said, because I, you and I are brethren. We are the same. We're, we're made by the same God. Satan, a, a demon will let you worship him. An angel of God will not. Christ allowed himself as God to be worshiped on earth, and he didn't rebuke people, saying, oh, don't do that. That's angel rebuke John. Christ says, you know who I am. So therefore, they, they, and they wanted to stone him for claiming to be God. They put him on a cross for blasphemy. He accepted worship. He accepted, he forgave sins, so on and so forth. I would say go to the PrayFive.org website and look up, you know, said, sorry, if, if you're just not coming on, my site got burned, and uh, I've got to rebuild it. <laughs> it might take a, a month or so, but it'll be back up. Uh, I've got everything backed up on disk. Yes, everything saved up. Wow, that's my showing my age. I got everything saved on my external hard drive. Um, Paul in Second Corinthians chapter two, it says, "I saw a man uh, when I know a man in Christ who, who fourteen years ago, whether in the body I do not know, whether it, whether out of the body I don't know either, but God knows. And such was caught up into the up into the third heaven." That's going to be chapter 12, or 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. Paul's talking about himself. That's just one place. And for time's sake, I'll go, I won't get and read all the stuff I have. Because I don't want to make this a two-week study. It's, let's just get it done tonight. Daniel, he says, I was watching the night. This is uh, Daniel 7, 13. It says, and I was watching in the night visions. And behold, one like the Son of Man, that's Jesus Christ, coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, the Ancient of Days is God the Father, and they, plural, brought him, ne brought him near, brought him, and they brought, brought him near before him. John, in Revelation chapter 21, verse 2, it says, Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from heaven, coming out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The new Jerusalem is coming out of heaven that God creates. It's 1,500 miles square. It has 12 foundations, which are the uh, 12 foundations, which were 12 apostles. Gates, which is built afterwards, you would think, because you build the foundation first, are the 12 tribes of Israel. The foundation of the gospel is on the, the, the apostles were used by Christ as the foundation of the gospel that backs up the whole scripture. Everything was looking for the gospel, for the coming of the Messiah. And because of the 12 tribes of Israel came the Jewish people and the Messiah. And that's the way that we, to get into where they were going, to get in to facilitate the motion, okay? But the, the foundation of the city has the names of each apostle. The 12 gates has, each gate has a name. There's four gates on each side. Has each one of them is named with one of the one of the 12 tribes. Benjamin, Judah, Gad, Reuben, so on and so forth. Um, so that's, you know, you can look that up. It's in uh, 21, this one is in 21, Revelation 21, 2. Uh, then you can look at, uh, oh, this is where the, um, Christ came out in Revelation 19, 11. Remember this one? It says, now I, saw, have, now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on that was called faithful and true and righteous, and he judges, and he makes war. So Christ, they say, oh, God, my, the, the Jesus I worship would never, never make war or kill somebody. Well, then you're guilty of idolatry because he's saying he's coming, and he's going to slaughter everybody in the Megiddo Valley, and then he's going to take all the people who took the mark of the beast, and, and kick them off into hell and later on to the lake of fire. Okay? When it says messenger of the Lord in the Old Testament, that's Christ. That's the incarnate Christ. Next time you go read uh, Passover on the on the, on the, death, on the angel who came through the, the 
cities. You may want to read that again and see who that is that did that. Um, again, on Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 through 9, this is where the last time we see the church on earth, the bride of Christ, uh, the age of the Gentile, the age of the is age of the Gentile is not then finished at this time. And then it goes to the tribulation because God will not is not going to pour out his wrath on an unbelieving on his bride who's already believing. The wrath is poured out on an unbelieving world to get them to change their mind. Why would he pour out his wrath on somebody who already agrees with him? It's like beating the crap out of somebody to agree with you when they're already saying, I agree with you. I'm in, I'm with you. And you're going to beat them until they, until they, what? Until they agree more? Okay, that just doesn't make any sense. Wrath and hell. Wrath just never refers to hell. But it's just God's wrath. And so the thing is, people say, well, yeah, but there's, 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 there's saints. Saints means believer. When you see it says a believer or a, a priest in the New Testament, that's a born-again believer. That's not a, someone at a church. That is a born-again believer, priest and saints. That's anyone who's Christian who's a born-again believer is a priest and saint according to the Scripture. They're not appointed by the Catholic Church. Um, he says there's thousands upon thousands upon 10,000 saints. You know, one of the, the Catholic Church, I think, has 400 or something saints. They say are, you know, the sainthood. God doesn't recognize that. Whether they're believers or not, I don't have any idea. So that's, it's, I have no way of knowing. Um, but John, like I say, John went before the, before the throne. Uh, Paul saw the throne. Daniel saw the throne uh, of heaven. And they all explained it the same way. It's uh, just overwhelming. Realize Jesus didn't spoke of hell way more than he spoke of heaven. He's trying to warn you. You don't want to go there, so you have more information knowing where you don't want to go, so you can go to heaven. Okay. First um, Corinthians chapter 15, 53. I'll go through these pretty quick. I've got like 10 minutes. For this corruptible must put on un incorruptible, and this mortal must put on immortality. That's a resurrection body going into heaven. No longer, there's no more sin, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more death for all the former things that passed away. That includes the memories of the people who aren't there that you were kin to, or your friends, or family, or spouse, or kids that may not be there. You, you, you'd, you'd have a horrible uh, mental pain if you knew your, your little girl wasn't there anymore, or your, or your boy, or whatever, or your wife, or husband. So that'll be taken away. So we won't, we won't, that won't, we won't remember that. Uh, Philippians 3.20, but our citizenship is in heaven, and, and from it we await a Savior, capital L, the, the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 11.16, but as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called to their God, for he has prepared for them a city, the holy city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is not going to be in Rome. Uh, the, the area in, in Rome that was it was it has nothing to do with, uh, with, as far as there's a lot of paganism there floating in that area and that's that's another study that's you know just look at the, I won't get into that it's it's so it's there's a lot uh, if you want to look into that uh, get the book um, the Gospel according to Rome the Gospel according to Rome uh, Amazon fifteen bucks. Uh, Revelation 21 4, it says, And God will wipe away every tear from the eyes. I'm not talking about happy tears. This just means, oh man, sorrow. Sorrow. There won't be any more. You can die in, and you may be so physically ate up or miserable in a prison or just whatever. And when you get there, that's all gone. Brand new body, brand new brain, brand new attitude. Okay? And God fixes it. He says, He takes every tear away from your eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow or crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. Amen. I'm looking forward to that. Hey, I'll have hair. <laughs> no, and I'll be able to run again. Um, the uh, Second Corinthians five one. I don't know if I did this one or not. We know that if if the tent, that is our heavenly home, is destroyed. Okay, talking about our bodies. Again, this is Second Corinthians five one. We know that if our the tent or our body 
uh, is destroyed, is our earthly home is destroyed. We have a we have a building from God. In other words, a new body, a house not made of hands, but with it, but eternal in the heavens. How do we know this? Is there any examples of a, of a resurrection body on earth that was that was a tore up body and then it came back as resurrection? If you're if you're most of you should be going, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Jesus when he came back after he resurrected. Because he came in in, in John, uh, when he came in to uh, chapter 20, where he came in and saw Thomas. Well, first eight days before he came in, he, and the doors and windows were locked. They made sure to say that so that you know, well, then how did he get in there without them seeing it? Well, he just walked through the wall because he has a different... And when he came in, he wouldn't all look like a zombie off of, you know, the, the Hollywood where it all eat up because he had been ripped to shreds before he went to the cross with a scourging. And it's, it wouldn't all swollen up after three days. He was in a perfect resurrection body. He still had the holes here and the hole here because the heart's here. And when they stabbed him, it said blood and water came out. That is anatomy showing that the that their death has occurred. He, he, he came in. He ate with them honeycomb and fish and drank wine. <laughs> I didn't say drank wine, but that's what you have at every meal. You don't have grape juice back then. There was no refrigeration, and the yeast is on the, on the skin of the grape, so therefore it's called wine for a reason. It is saying grape juice. He talks about that. That's another story. But he came in and ate with them. Thomas wasn't there. Well, he left and he came back. And Thomas in, in chapter 20 says, I won't believe it unless I put my hand here and my fingers here. Christ came back and again saying all the doors and windows were locked. Christ showed up and said, hey, Thomas, so that you'll believe, come put your hand here. Put your fingers here. He said, believe. Don't, be, don't disbelieve. And, he, and then Thomas bowed and said, my Lord and my God. Facing, and we have my Joe old witness friend say, well, he went, he turned and started facing the Father because it wouldn't make sense for him to do that because that would be blasphemy. Well, if, if Christ wasn't God, he would have rebuked him. Christ didn't rebuke him. Christ says, you, you tell the truth. You have faith because you see me. But those of the flock that you don't know, that's us, are going to believe through faith. Okay. Also, in, in my, for my Jehovah Witness friends, they believe that Jesus wasn't God anyway. They believe that he was, um, excuse me, yeah, I should have put the chart. Uh, they believe that he was Michael the Archangel. So that's uh, another story. Um, what will we do in heaven when we're there? Number one, we'll worship him forever. The angels are doing that now. We'll have fellowship with him, all the angels, with God, and with all our people, all our family and friends who are there now. You'll have an infinite number of conversations. If it's if you only talk to one person, ever, some one specific person every ten thousand years, you'll have an infinite number of conversations because there's no end. So we'll fellowship. We'll learn more about God and all the things. We'll learn more about God and all the things we don't even know, even ask for. Now we don't have. We, there's things where we're like, I never even thought to ask that. Okay, and we will we will serve. Heaven will be it won't be a boring without activity. We will work and we'll do. We'll have something that we totally are immersed in, and it will be to serve God. And we'll be ecstatic for eternity. We'll never get bored. We'll never see the same thing where we're like, oh man, I've seen this a hundred times. That's never going to happen. You're not going to ever get bored. You're never going to the, the the amount of electricity and energy that's going to be flowing. And the excitement will never, and plus you're going to be getting to see God face to face. So, you know, we don't have to wonder what Christ looks like anymore then. Finish up, it says, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on, the, on track. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. That's it. This much information in one week. There's more, but I chose not to put everything in there because I want to just one week. Hell and all that had six weeks because there's so much. If you're not worshiping the, the, the God of the universe, Christ, who is God, the creator, then you worship some other God. If you're worshiping God who said, oh, he, he would never put somebody in hell, and my, the God I worship says it's okay to do certain sins. Well, then that's not the God of the Bible, and that is idolatry. Uh, 
Then he said, there'll be many false Christs who'll come and say that I am he, come worship me. They'll be in churches or buildings that claim it and have a cross on it, but don't, like the Joel Osteen Church, the Kenneth Copelands and Benny Hens, Creflo Dollar and all those, Beth Moore, Joyce Meyer, just to name a few of a lot. He said, don't go there because I'm not there. Jesus Christ is God Almighty. He's the creator of the universe. He came and died on the cross. He came in the image of sinful flesh. He went to a cross he didn't deserve and died for sins he didn't commit for people that don't deserve it. We spit on him every time we sin. The people there literally did it. And he said, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. But the ones who didn't know what they were doing, he said, those are, John 8, 44, he said, those are sons of the devil. And they will be recompensed in eternity for that. We believe that Christ went to the cross, died for our sins, shed his blood, became an atoning sacrifice, became a sacrifice for us, for what we deserved. Paid the sin of the world, went to a grave, rose three days later, and he's now at the right hand of the Father. We repent. Now I have an argument with somebody that, that says, well, you, nowhere does it say that you have to repent. Bull. It says repent. Repent means to turn from. Even if you don't use the word, you use some other word, so when you turn from, because you why would you need a savior if you don't repent? If you don't think you have a if you don't think you have an issue, an alcoholic has to realize they're an alcoholic to go to AA. They don't just show up and say, Hey, I'm not an alcoholic, I just want to, you know, get fixed. Well then we'll see you next week because you're not ready. To repent means to turn from. Paul even said, he said, turn from your sin. Realize there's a problem. You can't save yourself. Turn to Christ. Don't ask him into your heart. Never didn't say that anywhere in Scripture. He says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe that God raised him from the dead in three days and thou shalt be saved. Believe what he did on the cross, who he is. He's not just a good man or a prophet. No, that, that's, that would be a sinful person. He's sinless lamb of God, the Passover lamb. He died for our sins, and he said, I'll come to me. Read the book of John. When you finish it, go back and read it again. Get, and, and not just read it, but ask God, show me in your word what this means through your Holy Spirit. And to accept Christ as your Savior, to yield to him, to confess your sins the ones you know, and to yield and ask him to save you and to become your Lord and your God and your Savior. When you've done that, please just, you know, you can still, you can't go through the Pray 5 site, obviously. Just go on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube here, if you're watching on Facebook, uh, just send me a, a, a message. If you have any questions, if you need a Bible, let us know. We'll send you one. Next week, we're going to be teaching on it's going to be a surprise. When I say a surprise, I mean literally a surprise. I've, I've got too many too many lined up, and I don't know which one I'm going to do on which study I've, already, that I've got that I'm going to be teaching on. I've never done that. First time I've ever, my, first time I've, since I've been teaching, I don't know exactly the next three lessons. I don't know why. We'll find out. Father, thank you for this time together. Your blessings, your mercy, your grace. Please open the eyes of anyone who's watching who's not saved to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Please be with the people of Israel. Give their soldiers victory on the battlefield. Take away the, the hearts of the enemy, of Hamas and of Hezbollah and Jihad. Take their hearts away. Make them cowards in the battlefield. May you take away their will to fight, take away their communications and their organization and their um, ability to act as a unit and give the Israelis victory in the battlefield. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Amen. We'll see you next week.